one thing was for sure. They both believe Sparks to be a total tool. Be an exciting contest which shows that divorced couples can still have fun together, right? Mythological hero Achilles. C. On the spot dice spin. We are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. Over the course of the past five years here on Game Show Garbage, especially during the Price is Wrong month, <laughs> some of the most popular inductions that we have done are the ones based on pricing games, especially the ones that were really, really bad. We've done mostly all of them. We did the first incarnation of Bullseye, Joker, Professor Price, On the Spot, On the Nose, Double Digits, and of course, Split Decision. But the three that have eluded this reviewer of crappy game show minutia are those from 1978. The reason being is that the footage was never found or released to the mass public after the original airings. Mainly because those shows had furs on them, so GSN couldn't rerun them thanks to an edict from Bob. But, that is until Wink Martindale's YouTube channel saved the day, and thus, the three failed pricing games from 1978 were able to be viewed to the masses. And after seeing them, I kind of wish they hadn't. Well, it's a subject that I chose for today, so let's go through all three of them. We'll start off with one of the more controversial pricing games. Not because of the way it was played, but more because of the way it was presented. I'm talking about the shower game. I want you to see the new game you're going to play. Let's show him the shower game. There it is. Now look at this. You're getting ahead of us, Anthony. He's taking his shirt off already. Keep the shirt on, please. This is a family show. Anyway, this is a pretty simple game. You're shown six shower stalls. All of them have a potential price to the car, and all you have to do is pick the right one. Inside three of the stalls that are the first away from the price of the car are confetti, which is kind of music, but you're allowed to pick again. The two prices closest to the car, but not the correct amount of the car, rings down $1 bills and gives you $100 in cash, and the game is over. Hitting the price on the head drops the key, and you win the car. It's a stupidly simple game with mechanics that have been done in multiple other games, namely double prices and five price tags, but without the true-false qualifier in the beginning of five price tags. This was axed rather quickly, only being played a few times during the first two months of the show's some season. Now there are a couple reasons why this game was retired as quickly as it was. One of them being was that it was a brainless game, but the second and the one that most stuck with the game was this. It was the setup of the stalls and how they looked. A lot of Jewish watchers in the audience and from at home complained because they actually look like the shower stalls that you'd see in Nazi concentration camps from World War II. I'm dead serious about this. So, with all of those complaints, they complained to everybody, by the way, station managers, they complained to the producers of the show, they even complained to Bob, and thus the game was quickly retired. And I think we all could be thankful for that. Next up, let's go to the races for finish line. It's not the sort of thing that you usually win at the races, but that is right. what you can win oh, okay. playing finish line. Now, to win finish line, this horse has to cross that finish line. And... Debuting in February of 1978, finish line was a pricey game based around horse racing. It seemed fair, since they had one based around track and field and hurdles, so I could see the progress of mind. The game had the contestant decide which of two small items was worth more. The one the contestant chose would go on the horse, while the other one moved the finish line down the track. This would repeat two more times before we get to the big reveal. Hmm. Two small items. You pick the one that's most expensive three times. Hmm. I wonder where we've seen this pricing game before. And, Debra, I am going to give you three more prizes. And they're yours. You get to pick them out. I'll show you two prizes at a time, and you get to tell me which prize you want to keep. 
May I suggest you keep the one you believe is higher priced? Because if at the end of this game you have kept more than you've given away, you will also win that furniture over there. Yep. This game is nothing more than a blatant ripoff of Give or Keep. Actually, the purpose of Finish Line was to replace Give or Keep in the rotation. Finish Line was done much, much worse because it was so drawn out to the point of tediousness. For starters, Give or Keep only took about two minutes to finish. This game took about three or four to finish because they spent quite a bit of time moving the finish line and the horse trying to go to the finish line. That's all I have to say about this game. It was a blatant ripoff. It tried to have all the pageantry of hurdles, but wound up with all of the grace of somebody who had too many mint juleps at the Kentucky Derby. Finish line was the new coke of pricing games, especially for the prices, right? For this major reason. It was designed as a new idea to replace the old classic, and it was given such a bad rap by everybody that the old formula was brought back. Now, Give or Keep would be brought back after Finish Line was retired, and would stay on the price rate right all the way until 1992. So, yay! Okay. Now let's get to it. If you thought Shower Game was bad and Finish Line was bad, here's the real, real bomb of Price and Games. Professor Price lasted only two playings. This lasted only three. I give you Telephone Game. Now, Jose, to win that automobile, you must make a call to the telephone on the automobile podium there, you see, where it says car. Now, to make the telephone call, of course, you have to have a dime. I am going to give you a credit of one dollar in our Price is Right bank. Lasting a blistering three weeks on the show in November of 1978, Telephone Game had two stages. The first stage is that the contestant has shown four food items and the contestant must pick two of them that doesn't add up to over 90 cents. If they pull that off, then they move on to the second stage, and that's the price to get the car involving the name gimmick of the telephone. Bob shows the contestant the phone book of potential prices. One's for the car in dollars, while the other two are for the prices of small items in dollar or cents. Think of the uh, small items in give or keep or finish line. The contestant calls the dumper and wins what the dumper goes to. Uh, I've rewatched this a few times trying to find something good to say about this. I got nothing to say. The setup is awful, the gameplay is broken, I could try to figure out more to say about it, but Roger Dobkowitz said it best. It was lame. I even asked some metalheads in the Capitol Hill area here in Seattle and asked them their opinions on these games. Here's what they had to say. Hey, I couldn't agree more. These were three terrible, horrible, no good, very bad games. And the haunting feeling of having to do these games is now over, so I'm thankful for that. You know, maybe we should have just left the cover on these bad, bad games and just leave them relegate to the dustbin of obscurity, never to see the daylight again. But then again, that's what YouTube's for. Anyway. Thanks for watching us on Price is Wrong Month here on Game Show Garbage. I'm Robert Settlement saying help control the troll population. Just ignore them. Goodbye.